Grade 6 Math, number 7.1, Double Bar Graph and Double Line Graph. A double bar graph is, a use, is useful to compare two sets of data, information, and a double line graph uses line segments to compare two sets of data that change over time. Here's a double bar graph. It's the number of books that Emma and Tala have read over eight months. So for eight months, Emma and Tala kept track of how many books they read, they made a double bar graph to compare the information, the number of books read, the months, who read more or less each month, and they remembered a title, a key, and to label the axis. So here's the title, number of books Emma and Tala read, and the label is over here. It's from zero to five, because the most they read was five, and they labeled it books read, and then they put the months here that they read the books. Here's the key, so that we know that the purple is Emma and the pink is Ta. See? And each month, they filled it out. January, Emma was two, Tala was one. In February, they both read one. In March, Emma read two, and Tala read three. See? And we can easily compare and see who read more or less. We can even see that Tala didn't quite finish a book in May. See? So that's a double bar graph. It's comparing two things to each other over that bit of information. Okay, the Animal Welfare League has been around since 1935 or so, and they adopt out many types of animals besides dogs and cats. So to make a double bar graph, a double line graph, I'm sorry, you choose an appropriate scale. Now because we can see the lowest is 26 and the highest is 168, we can go from 0 to 175. That would be a good amount because that would fit this bit of information. You plot a point for each bit of data for the dogs and connect the points with a line segment, and you do the same thing for the cats. You plot the points for the cats, and then you draw line segments to connect them. You include a title, a label for the axis, and a key. So our key is going to be the dogs are blue and the cats are pink. So for the dogs, in April it's 122, so we put a dot right underneath the 125. For May, it's 135 for the dogs. So we put one above the 125, but below 150. For June, it was 164, so we put it above the 150. July was 168, so we put it just below the 175. And August was 139, so we put it in between the 125 and the 150. See? Because the numbers were so varied, our scale would have been way too long if we included all the numbers. So we just did increments that would fit. Now, cats are way lower. They don't adopt out as many cats as they'd like to. So in April, there was only 28, so we put it right above the 25. In May, it was 26, so we made it touching the 25, because it was just above it. June was 42, so we put it in between the 25 and the 50. July was 57, so we put it above the 50, but below the 75. And August was 41, so we put it below the 50. Now, what we do is we connect each of these lines with a line segment. That way, we can see the trend of what's happening. See? So the blue is dogs, and now the pink is cats, and we connect that with line segments. If I didn't have to hold the camera, I would have used a ruler to make it neater. But you can see the information more clear and the highs and lows of the adoptions. You can see that in June and July they did more. So both the bo double bar graph and the double line graph help show the data clearly and we can see trends, highs and lows, and compare the information to each other. It's easy now to compare the dogs and the cats to each other, see? Or how many books they read. Okay? So that's a double bar graph and that's a double line graph. And that's how to make them. Make sure you remember all the parts. Make sure you remember you've got a title. You label the axis going up and the axis going along the side horizontally. And make sure you have a key so people know what your graph is showing. Okay? I'll see you next video. We're going to talk about circle graphs. Bye.